on the first day of the week, the disciples went to the tomb and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Let, let us say it again from where you are. Christ is risen. He is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We welcome you, our virtual audience, those of you who are engaging with us from your living rooms, from your offices, wherever this Easter day has found you. We welcome you and wish you a happy Easter. We'll begin our service with that hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. And if you are able, let me invite you to stand and we sing together as we celebrate our risen Lord. Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. A triumphant holy Indeed, Lord, our God, we praise you. We lift you far above all gods. We praise you for the gift of your son who was raised from the dead for our justification. And so we pray for everyone, even as we celebrate this Easter, that your presence will come into our homes this morning and bring a sense of hope no matter what we are going through. Continue to guide us as we celebrate the resurrection of the Son of God. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let me invite you to sit. Or if you are able to kneel, to kneel as we continue in prayer. 
aware that we worship a holy God, we will come before him in humility and ask for his forgiveness of our sins. Let me invite you now to take a moment to reflect upon your life and upon the past few days and bring anything which is not right to God for him, asking for his forgiveness. We now join in the words of the general confession as we pray together, saying, Almighty God, we confess that we have sinned in our thoughts, in our words, in what we have done, and in what we have failed to do. We are like lost sheep, unable to help ourselves. Have mercy on us, Lord. Forgive those who confess their faults, as you have promised. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through our blessed Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us join in that prayer the Lord Jesus Christ taught us, saying together, Our Father, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come. come. Your, will your will be done, done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily, daily bread. And forgive us our sins as, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead, lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. We'll share in the collect for Easter day. The collect. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honor, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Amen. I will now invite you to stand and we'll read Psalm 118 together, verse 14 to verse 24. It is Psalm 118. We'll read it together, verse 14 to verse 24. I will lead you, lead us in the even verses, and you will repeat with the old verses. We're using the new international version. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Shouts, Shouts of joy, joy and, and victory resound in the tents, tents of the righteous. righteous. The, the Lord's, Lord's right, right hand has done mighty things. things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will, I will not, not die, die but, but live, live and will proclaim what, what the Lord, Lord has done. done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord, the Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Glory, Glory be to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever, world without end. Amen. Amen. You may resume your seats. 
We are going to read from the scriptures and I'm going to invite our brother, Reverend Alex Kamoga, to lead us as we read the scriptures together. Our reading this morning is 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 1. Pause first later to the Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 1. I'm using the ESV version. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. We, we are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, people of God, today we are so privileged to have the vice chancellor of Uganda Christian University, bring God's word to us on this Easter day is the Reverend Canon Dr. John Senyonyi. Prepare your hearts as we get ready to hear God's word. And before we receive the word of God from him, we'll sing that beloved hymn, Lo, in the grave he lay, Jesus my Savior. Let me invite you to stand, if you are able, in your homes, and join us as we sing that hymn. Oh, 
Blessed Father, thank you so much for a day such as this when we can celebrate the resurrection of your Son that brought us hope, that brought us justification, that brought us access into your presence. And so, dear Lord, now as we look into your word, help us to understand it is your word, and therefore may we hear your voice as you speak to us that I will be a vessel, I will be a channel, I will be that sponge that you squeeze and get out your word clearly to your people. Speak to me that you may speak through me and help me to decrease that only you will increase, that all glory will return to you in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our blessed Lord. Amen. Please do sit. Let me begin, first of all, by re-echoing what the chaplain said, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. It's such a wonderful day when we can come together and be able to share from God's word, mindful that the Lord Jesus Christ is indeed risen and now sits in glory. I want first and foremost to recognize that there are those who may be unwell, there are those that may have been bereaved lately, at least I do remember Mrs. Sarah Chigongo, the wife of our former Sechibobo, the Saza chief here, and others that have lost loved ones. We want to condole with you and to pray, we continue to pray for you that God will give you the comfort that you need at this very difficult time. But on top of that, of course, we, all know, we also know that these are very anxious days. The days of the coronavirus, or otherwise called the COVID-19 pandemic. And I'm quite aware that even as I share with you today, people react very differently to situations like those. Maybe some of you are now paralyzed by fear, while others... They look on in apathy, feeling they cannot do anything. I have even read that during this time when people have to stay home, some are struggling with family discord due to the lockdown. There are others, of course, who may have no hope or they are unsure of the future. And I want to particularly speak to those who are the, uh, the usual UCU congregation 
Wherever you are, I just want to assure you that the message today is a message that brings hope to you. We need to understand that fear, which now seems to be everywhere, and many people are very fearful. It's a function of the unknown. You look into the future and you just don't know what will happen. You think your life or your lifestyle is threatened. And you know, fear plays on our imagination. And we start asking ourselves the, que the question, what will happen tomorrow? What if this or that does not happen? What is going to happen? Now today, I have decided to speak coming out of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I have titled my message, a very, very simple title, The Simple Gospel. That's what I'm going to be talking about as we look at the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I do hope that you have kept your Bibles open at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the first 19 verses. I want to commend to you that when you have time, do read the entire chapter because the whole chapter is very critical for what we are celebrating this morning, this Easter Sunday. The resurrection of Jesus is genuine good news. And that's what I want to spend my time on. For it is the defeat of the last enemy, as Paul calls him toward the end of that same chapter. Fear promises us this enemy, and that enemy is death. And so when you are fearful, you start wondering, am I going to survive through this? And maybe there are some of us now as we think about the coronavirus, and there are all sorts of messages that are coming around us that are saying, we've not seen the worst yet. And you wonder, will I be caught up in it? And we start feeling helpless. And fear just keeps on promising us that maybe you'll be the next one. Maybe you'll not be able to survive. But Jesus' resurrection says to us, to us, death cannot reign over us anymore. And that's what I want to spend a lot of time talking about. The simple gospel that is brought to us on this day of the resurrection. The Corinthian church was a church that was being torn in many different directions. And for this particular chapter, Paul wrote it mindful that the Corinthians were even beginning to question the gospel that had been passed on to them, the gospel they had believed, the gospel they had received. And so they were doubting the resurrection. They were questioning the resurrection. Now the resurrection of Jesus Christ, I must say, is the distinctive message of the church. Nobody else has it. We are the only ones that can speak with the confidence that the grave of Jesus Christ is empty. We alone have it. And indeed, if we do not, if we start doubting or disbelieving the message of the resurrection, we have no gospel, we have no message, we have no good news to the world. It's very simple, this gospel. Let me just read for you what Paul actually says in verse 3 of that chapter. And that's the verse that I want to focus on most of the time. He says, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, and listen to this, that Christ died for our sins. And I want to read it differently. Christ died for your sins. In accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. That is the simple gospel that we want to bring to you this morning. This is the totality of the good news. And if we try to preach anything else, we are missing it out. So I'm going to focus on those three points which are very important that Paul makes there. The very first one that he says to us is that the gospel begins with Christ died for our sins. Died for your sins, died for my sins. Now the Bible is unambiguous about our sinfulness. All humans have got one incurable disease, common, universal to all of us. And that disease is called sin. It separates us from God. 
And so David was able to testify in Psalm 51 verse 5, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. And Paul himself testifies in Romans chapter 3 verse 23, Since all have sinned and they fall short of the glory of God. And therefore when we hear this message that Christ died for our sins, it's a message that is universal for all of us. You do not have to do bad to be a sinner. You are a sinner from conception, as David testified. You are a sinner from birth. You do not catch it like the coronavirus. You are it. You are a sinner. Whether you accept it or you don't accept it, the truth of the matter is you are a sinner. And for that reason then, the Bible goes on to say in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the wages of sin is death. In other words, for the person who does nothing about their sin, there awaits them only one destiny. It's the destiny of death. From Adam and Eve, God's creation law states very clearly, every sinner dies. And indeed, Paul tells us in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, whatever dies is affected by sin, for death came through sin. So friends, the very fact that you yourself are fearful of death, the very fact that you are going to die is evidence of what your state is. You also suffer from the same disease that any of us suffers from. Now mindful that on Good Friday, Bishop Obetia, the Right Reverend Dr. Joel Obetia, was preaching here. And he made a statement that I want to re-echo here because it's very relevant as we move to the resurrection. He says, Jesus was not condemned for what he did, but for what he is. He was not condemned for what he did, but for what he is. In fact, Jesus was condemned for what you and I are. Because when you read the story, in the Gospel of John in chapter 18, the Jews had no case against him. And when the Jews brought him to Pilate, first they said he calls himself God, then they said that, oh, I think the problem is because he calls himself a king. And Pilate could not exactly know what the case against Jesus was. So he turned to Jesus and asked him, what have you done? In other words, he was asking Jesus, what is the case deserving death that brings you before me? Therefore, my dear friends, when we say Jesus was condemned for what you are and for what I am, I'm talking about being sinners. That's exactly why he was condemned. And you know what? Your salvation entirely rests on what you are. Whether it's not, about, it's not about what you do because many people think that what they do somehow will excuse them or somehow will, will condemn them. Your salvation rests on what you are, less on what you do. The critical question that you must ask yourself is what are you? Are you a forgiven sinner before the cross of Jesus or you are still in your sins? Jesus' trial was our trial. His condemnation was our condemnation. So Paul says here, Christ died for our sins. Now, let me go to the second point that he makes there, that he was buried. It's part of the gospel. And Paul points out that the gospel also carries the burial to really convince us that Jesus really died. Because if he really did not die, then we cannot even talk of a resurrection. We simply talk of a resuscitation. We talk of coming to. We are not talking of a resurrection. But the fact that he says, and he was buried, he's saying, Jesus died dead. He was not alive, physically dead. Some people don't believe that Jesus died physically. And if you do that, then you can never believe in the resurrection. 
But the resurrection that we are talking about here is the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who actually died physically. Otherwise, the resurrection is bogus news without his physical death. The burial of Jesus is essential to the gospel. For on the other hand, his burial, which tells us that Jesus really died, physically died, is saying that he identified fully with who we are. And that therefore means that he experienced our own death. And so even earlier on in the, in the previous phrase, when Paul says Christ died for our sins, it is saying that you are supposed to die, you deserve to die, because the wages of death, is, the wages of sin is death, but Jesus died your death. There is a hymn that I love. It says, one day when heaven was filled with his praises. Let me just read for you what the chorus says. The chorus says, living he loved me, this Jesus. Dying he saved me. Buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day. Why do I have that hope? Because Jesus rose from the dead. And so by faith, we are united with him in his burial. And without his burial, there is no resurrection to new life. That's why Paul says in Romans chapter 6, verse 3 to 4, that we were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. The burial promises us the next step of the gospel. That is the simple gospel. First of all, Christ died for our sins. Secondly, he was buried. But thirdly now, the gospel of Jesus Christ is that he was raised from the dead in accordance with the scriptures. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the heart of the gospel. That he was dead. He's now alive. The implications, of course, are staggering. Just to think of it. That this man who had been dead now a walk out of the grave on that resurrection morning that we celebrate today. The women went to the grave and they wanted to embalm the body. And when they came to the grave, they could not find his body. Later on, they were able to see that the cloth were laid out like the dead body had just come through the clothes. And later on, Jesus himself then appeared to Mary Magdalene, first of all, before he even appeared to the rest of the disciples. And that's what Paul talks about here, beginning from verse 5. He says, they are witnesses to this truth, that Jesus was raised from the dead. This is the heart of the gospel. Now listen, if Jesus is risen from the dead, then he's no longer subject to death, Paul tells us in Romans chapter 6, verse 9. He says, we know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. And you know what? Because Jesus is raised from the dead, because death no longer has dominion over him, that actually means death has no dominion over me either if I am a believer. That is a staggering truth. That the resurrection of Jesus Christ actually gave me the hope of understanding that. In him we have the victory over death. Later on, in verse 54, Paul writes and he's quoting and he says, death has been swallowed up in victory. Death then becomes our gateway. Many years ago, I remember attending the funeral of someone who wasn't a believer. Oh my, what a pathetic sight. For someone to be buried who did not know Christ. But for those of us who know Christ, that's why we sing at funerals. That's why we preach. It's because we are inviting people to come and join the dead in Christ into that future glory that has been promised us because death is sold up in victory. Death is our gateway into glory. We lose loved ones, and indeed even now, there are those who have lost loved ones. But if they have died believing, I want to assure you, if they have died believing, 
death has been swallowed up in victory. And may I say to you, my brother, my sister who is listening to you, that the one thing that you do need to do is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. When I say that death is our gateway into glory, I'm not being suicidal. I'm simply being homesick. Because I know where I'm going. I know that a day is coming. My death may be postponed, but it's coming. Your death may be postponed, but it is coming. The question is, where will you go? Can you also say that death has been swallowed up in victory. I am a pilgrim on this earth. Earth is not my resting home. That's why I say that I'm homesick. But there are many other implications that Paul points out to us, especially from verses 12 to 9. I'll just mention them very quickly. First and foremost, if Christ is not risen from the dead, then our preaching is vain. Then we pack up and go. Then our faith is wishful thinking. It's useless to base faith on one whose grave we can still visit and whose body is still interred within that grave. Then we, he says, if Christ is not risen, we must be conmen, claiming that God raised him when he didn't. And if Christ is not risen from the dead, we are still in our sins, he says. The resurrection is what validates the statement, Christ died for our sins. We would not even say Christ died for our sins if he had not risen from the dead. But also, Paul tells us that if Christ is not risen from the dead, then the dead who, have, who believed in Jesus are lost. But then he goes on from verse 20 onward. Like I said, you can read that for yourself. And then he goes on and he says, but in fact, in fact, and I can hear the excitement. I can also feel the excitement. I can also join him in the excitement to say, but in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. And for that reason, my sins are forgiven. When I die, I will go into his presence. You can see now why Paul says those words. That in, very, in the very first verse, and he says, I want to remind you Corinthians. I want to remind you. And I want to remind each and every one of us. Maybe some of us are beginning to doubt. Maybe some of us have not put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to what he says. I want to remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preach to you. Which is the gospel? Christ died for our sins. Christ was buried. Christ rose from the dead. This is the unchanging gospel that we bring to this changing world. This is the simple gospel. Why may I say this? Many times when I hear preachers these days, I really wonder if they are able to summarize the gospel like Paul summarized it. Because many of us spend our time talking about getting this blessing and getting that blessing and getting rich. In other words, they do not even know where they are going. They are living like they are permanent citizens of earth. But as for me, I am a pilgrim in this world and I'm going into the presence of Christ. One day, I shall be there. What is your response then? Paul says, I preach to you this gospel which I received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved is the only gospel that brings salvation. If you don't know Christ, if as you started to hear me, you didn't know the Lord Jesus Christ on this resurrection Sunday, let him resurrect life in your heart. That you may turn your life over to the Lord Jesus Christ. Like I did 44 years ago. When I invited Christ in my heart and he saved me. And that's the message that I bring to you this morning. May God bless you as you surrender your life to him. All you need to do, you bow where you are, you pray, and you invite Christ in your heart. So let us pray. Blessed Father, we want to thank you so much for the message of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What a glorious word it is. 
Lord, you know the many that have heard this morning. You know the sinfulness of our lives, of our hearts. That which we inherited from Adam and Eve. And so today, may you open their hearts that as many as hear this word, if they did not know you, may they open their hearts to this hope that is indestructible, this hope that can never disappoint us. I invite you, my brother, my sister, if you're willing to give your life to Jesus today, this morning, on this Resurrection Sunday, simply say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I have heard about the love that brought you into this world. I invite you, take over my life. I'll confess you from now onward. You are my savior. And I'll walk with you as my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Nevasa e anunu lanze e anko nyawa chisa Yesu ankuna ansanyu sisa era bulicho yevazi dwe Yesu tukute tende reza Yesu Yesu o If you prayed that prayer, we would love to know how to support you, how to encourage you. Let me encourage you to send me a message. I prayed that prayer. And you send it to 0772-508-937. I prayed that prayer on Easter day to yield my life to Jesus. Now we want to bring all our concerns for our families, for the world, for the nations of the world to God in prayer. And our sister, our Reverend Lovisa, will lead us in prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for the gift of this new day. This Easter day, O oh God, a day on which we remember how you rose from the dead for our sake. We want to thank you so much, Lord, for your word that has ably come through for us this morning, reminding us of the simple message of the gospel of Christ, that, Lord, you, our Savior, Jesus Christ, died, that you were buried, but most importantly, that you rose from the dead. We want to thank you so much, God, for the hope that comes with that message of the resurrection. We want to bring before you, King of glory, the body of Christ, the body of believers in this country and in the entire world, that, Lord, at a time as this, as many are engulfed with fear that, King of glory, your word of hope will give us encouragement that King of glory, you will watch over your church and that Lord, that same power that we see on the day of resurrection will ably be displayed in your church. We want to thank you, Lord, for the different ministers that serve in this church. We continue to pray, O oh Lord, that your word of wisdom, your word of encouragement will continue to reign in their hearts and minds, that Lord, you will give them the zeal to continuously serve your people. We want to bring before you this morning, Lord, our families, aware that many families in this time do not have what to eat. Father, we ask, O oh God, that your hand of provision will be evident. We want to raise before you families in our midst that have sick people in them, that, Lord, your power will work in them, O oh God, and that you will minister healing. Your word tells us, King of glory, that your hand is not too short to save. 
will you minister healing to them, O King of Glory? Father, we are also aware that in these times, many families are struggling with violence. We pray, O God, that your peace that surpasses human understanding will reign supreme in these families. We also pray that your hand of protection will be visible in our different families. We want to thank you, Lord, for our nation, Uganda. We pray for the leadership of this country, right from the president to the least in government and to the local government structures, O oh God, that, Lord, you will minister wisdom as they fight this pandemic and that, Lord, you will give them the grace to take timely decisions. I also want to raise every Ugandan to you, King of Glory. As many are rebellious, as many do not want to take heed, Father, we pray, King of Glory, that through the leading of your Holy Spirit, you will cause us to abide by the measures taken, and that, Lord, when all this is finished, we will indeed come before you and thank you for taking us through this time. We want to pray for the world at large, that, Lord, we are aware many countries have registered many deaths because of this pandemic. We pray, O oh God, that you will come through for us, that, Lord, you will reverse the situation. We pray in a special way for the medical personnel that are at the forefront of ensuring that your people are taken care of. Father, we pray that you will be their covering as they render this timely service to us. We want to, in a special way, raise to you the Minister of Health and those close to her as they work, Lord. Father, may you give them peace. May you give them comfort and encouragement. Above all, Lord, we pray that you give them wisdom with regard to finding a solution to all of this. We want to remember our community, you see you. We want to pray for the top leadership of this university that, Lord, amidst the things around us, that you will be our comfort, that you will minister peace to our leaders. We want to remember our students that are scattered in this world and in our country, Uganda, that, Lord, your peace that surpasses human understanding will reign in their hearts and minds, and that, Lord, you will surely bring this to an end so that their studies resume. Father, your word tells us before we come to pray, you know the desires of our hearts. It is my humble prayer, Lord, that you meet each one of us at a different points of need, known for our own glory, but for the glory and honor of your name. This we pray for in the name of a risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me invite you now to join us as we share. In the words of the grace, saying together, May the, May the grace, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and, and the love of God and the, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Dr. Senior, you want to thank you for bringing your word to us and that message on the simple gospel is a wonderful message. I trust you too have been encouraged to see the power there is in the resurrection, what the resurrection communicates to us. I now invite our brother, Reverend Samson, to bring us notices, things we need to know, even as we move forward with the resurrected Lord. Uh, thank you uh, very much, and uh, especially to you who are tuned in. Uh, it has been a long a period of Lent, and today we mark the end of that period, and I hope that uh, the Lord has ministered to you. Uh, we want to say also that even beyond the Lenten uh, season, we will still be uh, broadcasting live our services. Uh, on Wednesday at 8.30, we will be having a service uh, that will be going on here online, and also on Sundays at 8.30, so we encourage you to keep uh, tuning in uh, during those hours, 8.30 a.m. I want to thank uh, the sound people, I mean the recording team, uh, for making this possible. It has been a unique experience for all of us. I also want to thank uh, the entire chapel team for uh, making this uh, happen. Thank you. I just want to also thank you for continuously uh, giving. Uh, throughout, we have had 
a number of you uh, sending your offering uh, through uh, mobile money as well as uh, through the account. And we want to encourage you to continue doing, like, doing likewise. Uh, the numbers are displayed on the screen. And finally, I published Bands of Marriage uh, between uh, Mr. Mark Harvest Obetia of Right Reverend Dr. Joel Obetia and uh, Reverend Canon Joy Obetia of Thorncroft Chapel Chagwe uh, with uh, Patricia Hope Atieru of Mr. Ayeko Julius and uh, Eyosoru Alice of Okura Pamak Zombo District who intend to be joined in holy matrimony on the 25th of April 2020 at 10 a.m. And if anyone has a reason why these two should not be lawfully joined in holy matrimony, uh, please do contact the office of the chaplain at Thorncroft Chapel Chagwe, Uganda Christian University. Thank you very much. Please now prepare your hearts to receive the benediction and Reverend Canon Dr. Senyonyi will give us the benediction. And now may the peace of God, which is greater than we can understand, guard your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of, of God and of his risen son, Jesus Christ. The blessing of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. May that blessing be with you, that Jesus, who is risen, may truly live in your hearts. And may that blessing be upon you in your homes and wherever you are now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us in this worship. Let me invite you, if you're able to stand, and we sing as we conclude this service. We'll sing about our confidence in the risen Lord. The song is, In Christ Alone, My Hope is Found. Just 